Hello, hello. This is a quick little trick that I have found for making vector assets look like they're hand-drawn or close enough for our purposes. Let's take a closer look at how it's done. So what I have here is a Photoshop file that uh, has a smart object that you can see here in the layers panel. Um, inside this smart object, if I double click on it, is a vector asset that I have brought over from Illustrator. Um, if I were to double click this, you'll see that it is a standalone uh, vector asset that I have literally just copied from Illustrator and brought into Photoshop, into this smart object. Uh, you can see the source of that vector object from this selection of game assets that I got from Shutterstock. You can find assets like this on any number of other stock uh, image sites, and it's a handy resource if you need something quick and simple. And honestly, these on their own look perfectly fine if you're, look, if you're looking to make something very uh, crisp and clear. These are great. They're good. Uh, but sometimes you want something that looks a little bit more hand-drawn, and these definitely look uh, very crisp and clean and vectory, for lack of a better term. So I wanted to uh, find a way to turn this into something that looks more hand-drawn. Um, and after looking at uh, several different Photoshop actions and filters, I feel like I've narrowed down just a handful that are necessary to get this done. So those are, namely, let me close this smart object. Um, I have applied uh, three smart filters on this smart object. Uh, let's go through them one by one. Uh, first off, let me turn this off and see what it looks like on its own. Cool, so this is what this icon looks like without any smart filters turned on. And let me turn off everything here. All right, so starting from the bottom, the oil paint filter, if I double click that, it's warning me that, um, I'm gonna, let me not show this again, but it's warning me that uh, when I preview the oil paint filter, it won't show the results of all the other filters that are above it uh, in priority. But, um, but let's start from the bottom. Click OK. Uh, you can see the settings that I have for this oil paint uh, filter are pretty minimal. Um, really, all this oil paint filter is doing is smoothing out the sharp lines and the very sharp vertices that are kind of indicative of a vector object. Uh, you can see how it's blurring some of the objects together. Um, if I were to increase some of the uh, some of the settings on this, you can see that it gets even more blurry in some cases. If I were to increase the stylization to max, it gets completely uh, impressionist to, to some extent. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm not touching any of those settings yet. I just wanted you to see what happens if you start fiddling with some of the knobs on this. Um, by far, it seems like the, the, the thing that has the most effect is just stylization, which is where I'm just leaving it be keeping it pretty minimal. All I really wanted that effect to do is just smooth out those lines, as you can see. Uh, when I turn this off, you can see those really sharp lines just kind of disappear when I turn on an oil paint filter. All right, what's the next thing? Uh, the next filter is Smart Sharpen. And Smart Sharpen uh, just really maxes out the contrast. It finds all the edges and brings them into as sharp relief as possible uh, against uh, any neighboring uh, fields of color. Uh, so you can see that the darkest areas are pitch black, the lightest areas are, are pure bright white. Um, and I can adjust the severity of this uh, quite a bit to the point where it almost looks like there's nothing really going on here. But I want to maximize some of this. Um, but uh, let's say we're to just adjust things like this and leave it like that. Okay. Um, this is just taking the, the radius of the selection down a little bit. Um, that is increasing the detail. Uh, if I were to increase the radius, it just loses all the detail and it only keeps basically the outlines of each of those grains of wheat. Um, but, uh, you yeah, I, I could, know, I could live with this. Let's just try this out and leave it be for now. Uh, leave it at that and go to the next filter. That would be in, in the filter gallery. There's a whole bunch of filter gallery options. Um, and the one I'm using in this case uh, is photocopy. And zooming in on this, you can see what photocopy is doing is basically just doing a, a the, the bog standard Photoshop effect of making it look like it was 
uh, run through a Xerox a few times. Uh, again, bringing out all of the uh, the individual contrasting points. Anytime there's a, a difference between two colors, it sort of draws a line between them. Uh, and you can increase the, the severity of that effect uh, by adjusting these knobs here. So let's say you were to increase detail, uh, you would lose some of the dark parts um, and keep some of the light parts. Uh, if you were to decrease the darkness, it uh, allows more grays, it, whereas if you increase the darkness, it uh, disallows more grays and brings brings basically all the darks forward. Um, let's say I, I kind of dig this effect uh, and I go with it. So you can see this is sort of a different vibe than where I started. So um, where it began was this, which has an interesting vibe to it, but maybe I maybe I like what the new one looks like now, which I'm kind of kind of doing. The thing is, this doesn't look like it's hand-drawn anymore, so I kind of want to go back to where it was. Cool. All right. Um, now, you might be wondering how uh, how this looks when it's small. So uh, say you reduce it in size like this. You want to test this out. You want to test out all of your icons, really, to make sure that they're legible at small sizes. So some of these finer details may in fact be lost by the time that you uh, reduce this down to the size of an icon that would go on a card. Uh, so always test for that. But for the for the general purposes of what you need in a, in a card game, uh, this isn't bad. This is, this is pretty good. Um, so uh, you can do some additional effects on this to make this look a little bit even more interesting and detailed. Uh, uh, not, not detailed, but uh, organic. Um, so for one thing, uh, one thing that you have going on here in this smart object is this background white. And the reason why I have that background white there is because uh, when you remove it, you also lose several points of contrast uh, between the foreground and the background um, and makes these odd, odd lines that just sort of seem like they're floating around. Uh, perhaps you like this effect and you can just kind of mask and crop out the things that you that uh, seem extraneous. But uh, for me, I wanted to keep that so I could get all the outer lines as well. So this might be enough for what you need for your purposes, but uh, for me, I like to have a transparent background around my uh, icons. Um, and right now I've got a white background behind it. So to get rid of that white background, uh, you can do this a few ways, but the one interesting way that I've found is to adjust the blend if gray settings. So all I've done is double click on the smart object layer, not the smart object thumbnail and I'm on the blending options here and under blend if gray, I'm adjusting the white end of the spectrum on this knob. And you can see that the, the further into the black end of the spectrum I go, the more grays get removed from this object. And it does so in a very uh, choppy pixelated sort of way um, because I've, I am moving both halves of this little knob together you can get more subtle uh, gradations if you hold the Alt or Option key while you drag this, and it will split up the two arrowheads separately so that uh, it's blending a range of white rather than any white. So starting off with one end over here and then the other end all the way over here, you start to get a much more softer uh, gradation or variation between the lightest parts and the darkest parts. And there you go. So that effectively just makes only the outlines visible. You could also do this by just multiplying this layer on top, but I have another plan in mind for what I'm going to do next. So I double click on this. I'm going to duplicate the layer out of the smart object and bring it back to my original document. So effectively, I have two of the same um, vector object here now. And let's do a color overlay on this. So we'll call that yellow, for example. So now, this is on a transparent layer. Uh, I could just export this as a TIFF, for example. So now I have a color-coded kind of sort of organic and hand-drawn icon. 
um, and uh, it, it more or less looks good enough for for some some aesthetics. Uh, it's not perfect. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be like a masterpiece or anything, but if you're looking for a different look, it could be useful. Uh, and the one thing this has going for it is that it's very easy to update. Uh, so say for example, you wanted to use uh, a completely different sort of uh, subject for this. Say you wanted to do a top-down view of a map. You can just bring in a different vector object into this smart object um, and make sure it's positioned in a relatively similar way as your main subject. You save that smart object and now that's updated on your main document. Um, and the trick of getting that fill right is of course to duplicate out of the smart object and bring it into your original document and it will land in basically the same spot, assuming your uh, smart object and your main document have uh, roughly the same dimensions. Um, so I can see some white parts of this stroke are still visible. I'm going to adjust the blend if gray settings and make that a little bit, a little bit softer and kind of bring the, the far end all the way over to the black so that it really goes absolutely into the black area. So like this. So that looks like a much more smooth transition. So yeah, it's a it's an interesting sort of vibe to it. Uh, I, I kind of dig this effect. Um, maybe you will too. Maybe you'll find some other uses for it besides icons. Maybe you want to do some artwork with it. Uh, but it's cool. Um, just as a by way of example, I can bring in another object here just to show you what it looks like when you just copy something straight over from Illustrator. Uh, I'm feeling hungry, so let's uh, grab this thing of ham. I copy it over, I paste it as a smart object. I don't select pixels, path, or shape layer. Um, I could, and that's not going to be an issue, but I like to keep this object editable in Illustrator. Um, so I'm going to make it a smart object, bring it in, uh, reduce the scale so it's within the bounds of the canvas, turn off any, any other layers, save that. And hey, I've still got the effect there. Um, some interesting things happen if you were to reduce the size of this object as well. Uh, let's say I were to reduce it down to this size. You can see that some of the finer details uh, get lost and only the, only the most uh, extreme edges start showing up. Um, but one thing I want to show you uh, really quick also is that you can bring this effect over um, onto other objects very easily. Um, so the way you do that is holding the option or alt key while you have your mouse over the smart filters line underneath your smart object. Um, you can see that uh, when you start dragging over to another vector object, you can see that it has those overlapping circles that indicate that you are presently dragging smart filter settings from one object to another. So if you were to drop this onto this smart object and let go of the mouse, you can see that those effects have now been transferred over to this smart object. And you can keep on doing this for other objects if you wish. Oh, I still have, uh, I still have the layer styles on this. So let me uh, clear all layer styles. Let's clear layer style and boom. So there you go. So yeah, it's kind of a it's it's a fun little trick. Um, hopefully, any of those little little settings are useful to you. Uh, if nothing else, I find honestly uh, knowing how to uh, alt drag uh, uh, smart filter settings from one object to another is useful on its own. So if nothing else, maybe I taught you that little trick. Well, uh, that's it for now. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this and uh, stick around. And hopefully, I'll do another video uh, soon on something else. Uh, we'll see. Uh, until next time, bye!